right, guys, it is time for lesson number four. Let's kind of take a question here, okay? The number one question I get asked the most is how do I improvise a melodic guitar solo? Let me start off by saying I'm super glad that's your number one question, first of all, because I could not tell you a thing about playing over giant steps or, you know, playing sweep tab or peggios. And secondly, I'm also super glad to hear that you guys are like interested in actually playing music again, because I sort of feel like that was out of fashion there for a while. Might might just be me. This is just my feeling. So the sort of sort of sobering answer is that playing a really melodic solo isn't really about the guitar at all. Actually, it's not about any particular instrument. It's more about developing your overall musicality. And it takes a lot of like partial skills that all come together to enable you to do that. That being said, I do have a couple of exercises and concepts for you that can help you develop sat musicality while still playing guitar, which is what we're here to do, right? So the first thing I have for you today is what I call the harmonic shell model, blatant ripoff of the nuclear shell model. Don't worry, it's going to be nothing like chemistry class. Right here. I'm gonna put this diagram, right? You see four shells. What are we gonna do with those four shells? Well, we're gonna start filling them with notes, all 12 notes of the chromatic scale, but we're gonna divide them up by their characteristic sounds in relation to a chord that we'll be playing them over. Yes, just one chord, not a fancy progression because we gotta start somewhere, guys, all right? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna record a little one chord vamp that's just gonna be an A major thing, all right? Let me see, what are we gonna do over that? That does it, just the thing, all right? So here comes shell number one. The first three notes we're gonna put into this diagram are the actual chord tones of the chord that we're playing over, which in this case is the third, the, uh, the major third, the root, and the fifth. All right, we're gonna throw those in there and those are gonna be your three safest tones to use All right, you can always fall back on these. They're never gonna be wrong They are gonna be a bit bland and Boring, but again, we got to start somewhere So what I want you guys to do and what I'm gonna try to do here now is play a solo using only those three notes No more Let's see how that goes. All right Should have probably gone for something a little more funky to make this more interesting, but this is what I went with, all right? Even I get bored of that pretty quickly, so let's move on to shell number two, okay? Shell number two is gonna give us two more notes to work with. It's gonna be the major second and the major sixth. Now, why is it those two? Well, because the five that should now be up there are the notes that make up the major pentatonic scale. And those two notes can be added to the chord tones without really worrying too much because they're almost not almost, they're always at least a major second apart from the other chord tones and are therefore going to create minimal tension. Actually, really no discernible tension to speak of. What they are going to do though, is add a bit of color and make it a little more interesting. And they also allow you to start playing some runs to connect these chord tones, right? So with those five tones we have in total now, let's go at this again. getting there. Now, let's get to part number, uh, to shell number three. Shell number three is going to complete the diatonic scale because now we're going to add the uh, fourth and the major seventh. 
Now, those two are now in conflict with two of the core tones, namely the third, which is in conflict with the fourth, they're a half step apart, and the root, which is a half step above the seventh. So those are going to pre create some significant tension, which is not a bad thing, though. They're still within the scale, and they're still fairly safe to use. You can use them, but maybe go for them or think of them more as passing tones rather than, like, target notes, because they will create some tension. All right, use these to kind of get some tension and release going and actually make an interesting solo, all right? So with all the seven uh, notes of the diatonic scale, let's play a solo. And let's kind of see that we play mostly shell one, a little less shell two, and then least shell three. That's going to give us the most musical result. Little little thing on the side. You can go for shell number three as target notes, but you want to be careful and probably have a resolution to one of, you know, the shell one notes at the ready because you might not like what you end up with. Here we go. That kind of starts sounding like what we had going on in the middle, uh, in the beginning, right? We could stop right here. This yields definitely the most musical results, but let's kind of take a look at Shell 4 for a second and see what we can do with those guys. Shell 4 is made up of the chromatic notes. They're not part of the scale. So it's going to be the flat 2, the flat 3, the sharp 4, the flat 6, and the flat 7. Those guys are spicy. Watch out for them. You can use them, there are no rules or no-goes in music, go for these tones if you want to, but exercise caution when you do. They are really going to introduce some very interesting colors, alright? I'm not saying you can't use these in the pop context, I'm not saying I haven't before, but be careful, alright? So. That's it for lesson number four. Thank you guys so much. Check back tomorrow for lesson number five. All right. And I'm going to play us out. I'm going to try to use all 12 tones. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm.